Welcome back to Business Today. Our discussion today touches on what Food Safety Day 2024. You are what you eat. And the big question is, are you eating right? Then it makes your life right. And we have a heavy, heavy panel here. Rosalind Daisy Karimi, Director of Fish Quality, Safety and Trade at Kenya Fishery Services. We also have Godfrey Nyangori, AgriFi Program Manager micro, at Micro Enterprise Support Program Trust. And uh, joining us virtually is Mr. Xegre Ojepat, CEO of Fresh Produce Consortium of Kenya. And uh, Mr. Ojepat, uh, production of fresh produce in the country, since we are tackling this, uh, the level of uh, production, uh, one of the challenges has been the use of pesticides. And um, it's neither here nor there. We understand there are different standards globally. Uh, bring us in and help us understand, uh, first of all, the utilization of these critical chemicals when it comes to food production and how they can be pro and also at the same anti food safety in Kenya. Um, thank you so much, Akimboy. I just want to say this. Number one, I want to reinforce that we are what we eat. And therefore, every person in this republic, constitutionally, is entitled to eating safe food. And that safe food must be nutritious, well-balanced, but most critically is that um, it must also be available constitutionally. But as a country, to get to your question is, I do not want to, I, I do not want to condemn pesticides as the source of food and, and safe food. And safe food can occur in different places. Pesticide contamination is the least, in my opinion, of the, of, of, of the bigger list that we have. It is how you produce, it is how you handle, how we harvest, how we handle, the containers we use for carrying our fresh produce, and how we store the food, and also how we eat the same food. For example, if you harvested food let me use cabbage or tomatoes that have been well prepared and you put them on a dirty container that is contaminated and you brought them to the house and used water that's not potable it, there are chances that you get contamination and then remember that for fruits particularly we eat them raw and therefore all you need to do is to wash a mango and eat and therefore there's so many other parameters along the way that bring path that can cause bring pathogens that cause unsafe food now, it also goes as far as the, the way we prepare the very food, how we prepare it. But just back to you in terms of the pesticides, this country has a system and a very good regula regulatory system that allows only approved pesticide within the territory of the Republic of Kenya to be used. However, we've had challenges where we have a porous borders and had certain molecules come to the country. The challenge we have currently on pesticides is the education to the masses. It is the extension services that needs to be provided by both the government and private sector to ensure that the users of the pesticide are using them correctly. The disposal of the same pesticide containers are very, must be done very well. But even after we have produced our food, the other questions of issues of heavy metals that are not attributed to pesticide, sometimes we do not get them. What we need to do is be able to encourage what we call a traceability system, must be in, enforced by every uh, value chain actor. In this case, supermarkets, groceries, the local markets must be able to ask the suppliers, in this case, whether it's a grower or a marketing agent, what we famously call brokers. They must all be able to let us know where did they get the food from. And the farmer should also be tasked, what did he do to prepare the fruit or the vegetable until it gets to the table? The issue of pesticides, again, is what is the selection of the pesticide? Who is advising the grower on how much and when and where to buy the said pesticide to deal with a specific pest or disease that affects our fresh produce? Okay. And therefore, what we have done as an institution is that we are running programs, capacity building programs, training on different standards and different um, standards that are globally acceptable, both in the domestic market and in the global market, ensuring that the principles of food safety are enshrined within the systems 
and within the operations of all the food safety, uh, the food operators, particularly within our membership. And we are now working with development partners. For example, we are working with MES to ensure that the farmers that they support have an aggregator or an off-taker so that whatever is produced is produced right and at the same time it's then off-taken and taken to the market fresh and safe. The issue of contamination then could appear along the way and we have a lot to do as a country both from the private sector and from the government sector in terms of taking full responsibility of how we handle our food how we store our food, even in our houses, and how we transport. Sadly, Kemboi, we have people who go to the butchery, they buy meat, and they put in handbags. And that handbag has soap, that handbag has uh, Vaseline, that handbag has so many things. Mm. So the meat from the supermarket will be, the meat you bought from the butchery is okay. But as, long, as, much, as soon as you mix it with different other products, either in the bag or in the container you're carrying, you're bound to cause contamination. Okay. Then there are contaminations that happen at the farm level, contamination that happen at transportation level, right. contamination that even happen on the chopping board, just uh, on the chopping board. How do you wash your food? How do you chop it? How do you prepare it? How do you serve it? And what kind of container? So how do we wash our hands? Do we wash our food with portable? So the challenges we have may just go beyond a pesticide. It okay. is not just about pesticides. It's about all many contaminants along the way. All and right. the reason why all of us must work on this and to prepare for, um, for, 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 for the rest of the challenges, particularly when you look at these years, I think. All right. Uh, very, very important. Uh, Rosalind, you, you heard Ojepat say yes. sometimes you buy meat <laughs> and in the bag there is Vaseline. You test this meat and it's like, there is a level of Vaseline in this meat, you know? Yeah. Uh, but for fish, I know initially you are going to at the market uh, level and this where the, the interaction between the producer and the consumer comes in, yes. uh, in the fish value chain. Yes. Um, how sensitive is that? Uh, what are people supposed to do? For example, a store the other time when I buy beef, I should be able to look at the beef and know this is certified to be here in the butchery which most of us are not able to look for that stamp and and verify so for fish uh what are the loopholes especially at the market level and what can be done to seal those loopholes to make our food safer thank you very much uh, noah i think um, uh, i want to start by saying that yes uh, fish once harvested we we got to the harvest to the to the environment mm -hmm. and uh, the government is putting in place uh, landing sites. If you listened to His Excellency during the Madaraka Day, we are doing landing sites both in uh, Lake Victoria and at the Indian Ocean. And these landing sites are to ensure once the product is harvested, there is uh, the, the the processing starts with the right uh, equipment, right infra infrastructure, clean water, because clean water is very important for fish. Temperature control is another critical area for, to, for fish to be safe at the end uh, consumption level. So temperature control, we, uh, what we advise is that uh, the use of ice, clean ice, and uh, clean ice is made from clean water, potable water, we say. So if uh, that chain is maintained from harvesting, you harvest it and put it in uh, clean ice, clean ice where the temperature is lowered. Why are we lowering the temperature is because to, of prevention of growth of bacteria. And then from there, once you get to the market, uh, you process your fish in an environment that pre precludes contamination. What am I saying? That it should not be contaminated by other, other things. You keep raw at their side and uh, cooked on their side. Don't mix the two. If you are using a knife to do the gutting and, and uh, scaling, then you need to make sure that is not the same knife you are going to use when the fish is ready. So that knife stays there. So once the fish comes to a uh, fish shop, I want to just start with that, then uh, what the Mama Mboga, Mama Karanga, or the establishment management is supposed to do is, as he has said, let note the 
source of this fish, traceability. Very, very important in fish. I bought this fish from this uh, beach, Usenge Beach in Kisumu. Let the person at the shop note that because that will help us trace where the problem would have been. Mm -hmm. So from that, you get your fish, and if you are preparing this fish maybe to cook or to store it, then you need to wash the fish using running water, clean running water portable land running water. The, the good thing is about the water in uh, most of these markets is from uh, the county government and it is clean water. Mm. So use that water, clean your fish, do the scaling, making sure the equipments you are using at each stage are not the same equipment you used. And if they are, then you have a process of cleaning them before you use them. Because fish, once opened, has bacteria. And that same bacteria, if not handled well, it will infect the fillet or the fish at the end product. Okay. So that is that. I mean, the, and any 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 challenges uh, occasioned by higher temperatures okay. will increase the multiplication right. of the bacteria. That's why I started by saying fish has to be chilled in order to preserve okay. its freshness mm -hmm. and its quality and to ensure at the end uh, of the consumption chain mm -hmm. that is at the fork, okay. that is the table, it mm -hmm. is clean and it is safe for human consumption. Right. Another thing I wish to say is that uh, uh, the storage of uh, fish, even when dried, must be uh, a cool place, not, uh, not, not in a hot place. Because now we have fish that is cooked, you've, uh, you've, uh, you've, you have deep fried the fish, it must be in a place that is cool, okay. not a place that is, uh, that, that is warm. All so right. the storage also is very critical. Mm -hmm. But traceability is very, very, very critical. Definitely. And in the fisheries, I want to say we have been able to, uh, uh, to take through uh, most of our fish business operators mm -hmm. through a training that they are able to, they are exposed to some of these aspects of fish processing okay. and they have been taking it very well. Okay. We have been working together with our partners, one of them is MESPT, to be able to train and sensitize the fish business operators on what is required, those basic requirements. I may not see them all of them here, mm -hmm. but we have been able to sensitize them and we are continuing as we come up with the guidelines, okay. which we are calling the fish business operators guidelines. Okay. So that is where we are at in the fish chain. Thank all you. Right. We have less than, than a minute, Mr. Uh, uh, Godfrey. And uh, I, I've realized there's a lot of partnership uh, with you guys. Uh, the bigger vision, when you talk about food safety in the country, uh, it, in less than a minute, give us the vision, like the way you have vision 2030, this is what we hope to achieve by 2030, manufacturing 20% contribution. I don't know, in regards to food safety, uh, what is our aim? What is our goal in our local context? And maybe I know this partnership are assisting to achieve that goal, but clarify for us so that Kenyans know where we are heading. Briefly. Yeah. Thank you, Noah. Uh, uh, number one, our vision is to build collaborations through the One Health approach that uh, all the government agencies that are in charge of regulation they can cooperate and they can work together to ensure that there's no gap along the, the, the value chain. Okay. Uh, that they can share information and they can communicate information to the right parties. Number two, we have a vision of building a food safety culture. Because when we build a food safety culture, then even consumer will begin to, be, uh, to demand safe food. Because they say, if it's not safe, it's not food. Mm. Therefore, you cannot have food security mm. when uh, you don't have safe food. The two have to go together. Okay. And the last thing is to ensure that we have a robust uh, uh, food safety system mm. uh, through uh, two faceted way. One, ensure we have proper training uh, uh, models for farmers mm -hmm. so that they are professional and then the other side we have proper institutional and legal frameworks both at the county level and the national level to ensure that regulation around food is properly done okay. and the last is to have proper in fact i would say this is the most important partnership with the media houses to ensure that there is a lot of communication mm -hmm. uh, that uh, information is shared with the public okay. so that they can demand safe food.
definitely yeah. an all-round approach and each and every single kenyan is a stakeholder yeah. towards this journey of ensuring that our food is safe it, if it is not safe then it is not food thank you very much uh, for your input thank you very much um rosaline daisy karimi director of fish quality safety and trade at kenya fishery services thank you godfrey anyangori agree Agrify Program Manager at Micro Enterprise Support Program Trust. Thank you for your time. And uh, Mr. Oksegre Ojepat, who uh, was actually joined us online, CEO of Fresh Produce Consortium of Kenya. And that's the latest from the World Food Safety Day 2024, being marked on Friday, the 7th of June. Make sure that what you're eating is safe. Because if it is not safe, then it is not food. I'm not keeping more. That's all from business today. Up next is Mbiwe KTN. Stay tuned and good afternoon.